live coming to you from the east end of Glasgow at the Dry Gate. My name is Gordon Smart. I'm like Simon Ferry if he'd gone to school. Uh, please do get in touch with us. The hashtag ScotlandHQ. We would love to hear from you. It's the big game today playing Croatia tonight. And I think we can do it. Come on, Scotland. Right, let's have a look at what we've got on the show today. We will be joined by Scotland women's superstar Erin Cuthbert. She's fresh. I think that's the right word from Wembley on Friday night. We've got Scotland legend, manager and player Gordon Strachan, my hero as a Scotland player as well. Amy McDonald, one of our finest musical exports from this country, will be coming in. I think she was on the tequila on Saturday night, so we'll see what conditions she's in in just a second. And all the build-up for the big game tonight against Croatia. So let's not muck about. We've saved the best to last in Scotland HQ. Let's meet our guests. First up, the one and only Erin Cuthbert. Didn't she come? Go on, Erin. Good to see you. Chelsea and Scotland women's star. Next up, former Scotland manager, Celtic manager, and a good heavy, I believe, as well. Gordon Strachan, here he is. Yeah. Yeah. Coming in, Chief. Good to see you. And a brilliant musician. We love her dearly. She's outstanding. Please welcome the one and only gorgeous, pouting, fragrant Amy McDonald. Yeah. Yeah. Great to see you guys, eh? He's Gordon having a little look at the memorabilia. I had that album, Billy Connolly. Billy Connolly. I had it. Proclaimers behind you as well. 1973 or something like that. Cracking stuff. Good to see. How are you feeling, chaps? You excited, Amy? Yeah, a uh -huh. <sighs> bit nervous. Um, it feels very weird, like, because it's, what I mean, what is it? It's Tuesday today. It's a bit <laughs> random, but it feels such a special day. Aye. It's yeah. exciting, isn't it? Erin, you were down at Wembley on Friday. Yeah. That was some outfit you had on, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I brought it back up with me as well, so I was going to bring it today, but I thought, no, quite the occasion. I've got to, you know, keep a little bit of unknown, so I can't wait. Yeah, listen, um, Erin, we, we were there on uh, Friday at Wembley, and I saw five strips in front of me with Gilmore on the back. And I know you know <laughs> Billy really well. Did you see the Gilmore clan when you were there? Yeah, we, I ended up um, seeing them before the game, and then half time again we saw each other. We ended up sitting next to each other um, for the second half, and they were brilliant. I used to saw his mother and his father, how proud they were. When, you know, when they were watching their little boy and when he got to play of the match, they just, Aye. his mum was crying and, and so overwhelmed. So it's just, it's amazing for the whole family. Uh, you have been tested this morning as well, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> I can confirm. Yeah, Gordon, have a look at this, right? This is the, the kit that uh, Aaron had on on Friday. What do you make of that outfit? <laughs> we need help, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> It was a brilliant atmosphere, wasn't it, on Friday night? Then? Oh, unbelievable. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to tell that Scotland was a minority. Aye. You know, I mean, everyone that I spoke to was watching it in the telly, said that Scotland fans made the most noise. And, aye. you know, England fans were too busy booting their own fans, so <laughs> put out their own players even. Aye. So, aye, we're not interested in that. Gordon, you were involved in the 2-2 draw in 2017. Yeah. Friday night, for a scoreless draw, it, it was a good result, really, wasn't it? It's a good performance, yeah. that's for sure. Um, I don't think... We, I, 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 I predicted it should not like me a nil nil, but I didn't expect that nil nil. Yeah. I expected a more back to the wall nil nil, but a, a confident nil nil, and a nil nil that could have easily been a, a win. So that was that was a real bonus. But and you don't often get a game where every player plays 70 to 10 and above mm -hmm. in a big game like that. So that was a huge bonus for them. There's, there's parts of the, the team that were that were absolutely excellent. I was going to say to Amy, do you remember much of the game? Because we follow your social media and there was quite a lot of tequila involved, wasn't there, on Friday night? I don't actually really remember much at all. I did go home and watch the highlights at like midnight, whatever time they were on. Yeah. And I thought to myself, I need to find that clip of Rio Ferdinand. So I'm sitting in my bed, steaming, <laughs> watching the highlights, trolling the internet to try and find this clip of him saying that he was so confident and he'd never been so confident about a game. And yeah. I found it. And then I put it on Twitter at like one in the morning or something and woke up the next day going, God, that popped. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't tell the full story though, because I think you were sitting with a full bag of cheesy puffs, were you not? Cheetos, yeah. Cheetos, there Cheetos. we go. Cheetos. <laughs> Here, Gordon, it's a dangerous game as a pundit, isn't it, though? You know, that, that confidence that Rio showed that came back and slapped them, didn't it? I don't know, really, because I, I never watched it. I never, I very rarely watch the punditry, especially if I'm on it. Um, <laughs> that uh, it spoils the game, really. There's nothing new to speak about it, yeah. so I don't bother. I usually just, I go wait till the game comes on and at half time I yeah. switch on to something else and watch Family Guy or something like that. <laughs> Might as well get a laugh that way. Gordon, I was going to ask you a wee bit about 86, right, because there's something that, that I thought was quite an interest. I don't know if it's a new phenomenon, right? Andy Robertson got all the players a box with whiskey in it and loads of different Scottish stuff. In 86, I think Graeme Soonis was the captain. Yeah. What did he get you and the rest of the boys? <sighs> I 
Nothing. <laughs> yeah, all you were hoping for in 86 was a phone call home. No, no, no mobile phones. Like no. being in the jail. And it, 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 you were only like one phone call a week Aye. to your family. And it was for three minutes or something like that. How are you doing? You all right? Kids okay? Fine, good. School smashing. See you later. How are you, you playing? Yeah, it might do. See you. Did you score? Yes, I did. Well done. See you. Bye. That was it. Um, are you enjoying it? No, really. Um, I'm in the room next to Fergie and he's coughing all night, splutting. <laughs> You know, um, so it wasn't, a, it, apart from the games, the, way back then, it wasn't enjoyable. I mean, no. the, the hotel rooms, it, I mean, I mean this, that kind of, I don't know, it was like Harlan inside my wall, but the yeah. wee single bed, but they, they, they had bought No luxury it. at all? Nothing. Right. Absolutely nothing. The TV, nothing. It was yeah. in Spanish, nothing. And even, I was telling you, but the only thing that was exciting, we had a, what do you call the bands? Mariachi bands. Have you seen this? It's these Mexican guys with. Yeah. You've seen all that, right? <laughs> aye, aye, aye. And uh, they, they were the entertainment. So every time we had a meal, they'd start playing behind you. And, you'd, and you're hating it the best. They say, I want to go home. Da, 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 one time, one time. And I thought, I'm going. And everybody thought, they thought I was best of mates with them. Aye. Really? They gave me a signed album and everything when I left. Aye. Um, and then one morning I got up at six. I thought I'm going to beat these clowns down to the breakfast. <laughs> So I went down my cell, I'm the only person in there. Just a bit of, a bit of toast, bang! The three of them come through, I'd stay here and dress, <laughs> and they're playing the thing again, oh, for Christ's sake. So there's just me sitting having a bit of toast with three guys, <laughs> singing one time at that. <laughs> so you, it wasn't a great experience, uh, apart from the football, to be honest with you. Uh, and I, 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 did, I did share a room with Graham, um, previous to that, when we were in uh, Santa Fe, and he's the only person I've ever seen Hanging up his underpants. Oh no! Hanging Seriously? up his underpants. How good is that? I mean, my gear was just chucked in the, in the corner. corner. <laughs> and Graham's like that with his underpants. Excellent stuff. Oh. I'm beginning to feel a wee bit like that about the Yes or I Can Boogie song, though. It's maybe just a bit running out of steam now. Uh, yeah, I think the fifth different cover version was, <laughs> <laughs> was probably when it needed to be retired. It's a bit too much, isn't it? Right, I want to show you a little clip here because everybody that's been in has uh, brought us a gift that we're going to auction off for the Scottish charities and the players have been incredibly generous as well, uh, giving us some of their stuff. Have a little look at this. You can get your hands on this little beauty, a signed Scotland strip. There's some great stuff on there, by the way. We've got given a personalised tape measure. <laughs> Special edition blend. Uh, it's an 18-year-old Scotland v England to celebrate, commemorate UEFA Euro 2020 Group D. Look at that. A pair of signed photo boots, the Adidas X's. They have put a strong tire flag next to me, which I'll obviously sign for you, but Excellent. I can also throw in one of my match day strips from the tournament. It was my trusted Casio, so I'm happy <laughs> this goes everywhere with me, and I'm, I'm giving this away. Cracker of a strip as well, signed by Darren Fletcher. Obviously the, the book that's been published about our kind of story so far, me and John McGinn have signed it. I've got my strip for the Luxembourg game. So fair. Um, so, that can go along with the tape measure, and if you want to measure how wide it is... <laughs> <laughs> Excellent stuff. <laughs> get yourself along to scottishfa.co.uk forward slash donate if you want to get your hands on some of that swag. Stephen O'Donnell's watch is actually older than Billy Gilmore, we can reveal. Uh, Gordon, have you brought anything in for us today? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I thought it was going to be a radio show. <laughs> <laughs> so it's thrown me completely. Um, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what we'll do then. If I get this, could you sign this strip for us after the show? We'll give that I'd away. I'd be delighted. Give it a good, good clean and I'll sign that. Uh, <laughs> Alec, it's Alec, very Alec, fragrant. Very fragrant. It's very <laughs> Cheetos. Uh, Alec McLeish came the other day with his 82 blazer, which was unbelievable. Really nice sort of <laughs> tailor. He's a sad man, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he really is a sad person. Really? Alec. He's got programmes for every game he played in. You would believe that. See every. This? And he actually went to the World Cup in 1986 and got a brand new camera. Yeah. And he was doing selfies and that before anybody did. It was brand new cameras. So he's taking pictures. If Zico walked by, he'd be taking a quick picture with him or get me to take a picture with him behind Zico and things like that. So these, the games that we played in, it's three games, because we always just play three games at these tournaments in Scotland. So he was taking pictures. So the end of it, you've got to remember these are the days we had film in it. There wasn't a film in it. <laughs> he'd been taking pictures Brilliant. for a month. Total full <laughs> oh. He's a sad big fella, isn't he? I was going to say to you as well, have you kept any of your stuff, your blazers or anything? Absolutely no chance. There's <laughs> nothing in the matter. <laughs> yeah. uh, I found a kind of wee, wee tracksuit, um, Aberdeen tracksuit for 1983 or something like that. 
No way would you get into that. No. I mean, no way. It's um, a family heirloom. Um, so I never kept, I've never kept anything, really. No. Amy, I was going to ask you a little bit about playing at Hamden. We had Nina Nesbitt on the other day, and she just talked about how that was one of the best moments of her career. And you've done it as well, haven't you? It's on YouTube every now and again, going to have a little look at you doing the Flower of Scotland. What, what is it like performing at Hamden in front of the Tartan Army? It's very weird. I mean, yeah. I've been lucky. I've done it a good few times yeah. now. Um, it's very nerve-wracking, that's the thing. Like, I don't get nervous if I'm doing my own gig. I just kind of go out and do it. But doing that, I think because I feel so proud to be there, mm -hmm. it takes on a whole other dimension. Um, and I just kind of work myself up into stupor beforehand. It also doesn't help. You can't really hear anything because yeah. <laughs> you've got, like, a little speaker in front of you, which you're trying to keep in time to the music. And then, obviously, everybody else that's there, 50,000 all around you. And Tartan Army never come in on time. Do they? they don't know, apart from when I'm there. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I remember I'd done it, it was the, against Spain, it was one of the best nights in Hamden. Um, we matched Spain, it was just unlucky we didn't get anything. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember getting back up in the lift with a few of the, the SFA Blazers and, and they said to me, that's the first time that's ever sounded like it's in time. It's like Excellent I'm having stuff. that. You know, it must be encouraging as well, Amy, as a, a performer to see crowds back in. Because that's, that's where your bread and butter is, and it's not far off now, is it? Um, I hope so. Um, I mean, I'm very close to putting a gig on sale and just calling it a football match. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll, I'll be allowed 12,000 people in. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's so nice when you watch the games. And, and even though the stadiums aren't full, just having that bit of noise, having the atmosphere, yeah. it makes a huge difference. I'm interested in all of your opinions on this today, right? Because I think Harry Kane's 100 million quid they're talking about. Your fella Fozzie. You'd quite fancy a hundred million transfer, wouldn't you, with him? I don't, I don't think I'd get a hundred pounds from him. <laughs> <100 quid. laughs> it's some money. I mean, Gordon, as a player, when you see that, you know, do you feel slightly envious that you weren't around in the era of that kind of dosh? No. No? Absolutely not. No, no, not no. even a tiny wee bit? No. Just for no, the privilege? No, whatsoever. What you can't... Um, um, talking about, you know, trophies and money, Football's not about that. Yeah. I can sit here all day and tell you stories about football. It's the only thing that makes me happy. Yeah. Any sort of game, I can find something ha that was funny in a game of football. That's it's, it's, yeah. it's gold to me, all that kind. Of. So no, no. And I think Harry Kane's worth a hundred million. He is, isn't and he? And I think he's a terrific fella. If you've ever met him, he's, he's got humility. He's humble. He wants to get better. He had. He took a hard route to get where he went. He went and loaned to six different clubs. So uh, I'm a great admirer him. I think he's the best yeah. uh, number nine in the world. Good to hear that. Erin, listen, you know, as a, a top player in the women's game at the moment, getting great results for the national team. What do you think when you see that kind of money flying around? Exactly like Gordon. Aye. I'm no jealous whatsoever. I don't think women's football is, will ever get to that stage, to be quite honest with you. And, and I think rightly so. Um, I've never sort of been in, in it for the money. I, when I grew up as a young footballer, I was just wanting to play football. You just yeah. wanted to keep playing, you wanted to play at the park, you wanted to, then you went to training, then you'd come home, you'd kick it against the wall. It was never about the money for me and I did never, I never knew if I could make it my profession and luckily women's football's progressed over 10 years and I'm lucky enough to call it my job but I've always, I've never ever thought about money, wanted money but it's, like Gordon said, it's a crazy amount of money but men's football's got that way now and that's, that's the way it is but He's, he's worth his weight in gold for it. Yes, he might not be performing well now in the last two games, but mm -hmm. that doesn't make you a bad player. Aye. You know, two games doesn't make you a bad player. You, you saw what he's done for, for years, so I'm sure he'll pick himself up. And, you know, these, if these clubs are willing to pay for it, then, then you take it. I think that's what was magic about Friday night. You could tell how much it mattered to that Scotland team to wear the jersey, couldn't you, Gordon? Always makes that. Whether you're winning or losing, it doesn't matter. It ends up being a, a losing side. Have we tried because we're on the winning side? No, yeah. we tried the same. Yeah. There's just things, you know, people relate um, uh, winning to putting 100% in. There's many a times we've put 100% and we've got beat. Aye. But what we, the, the perspective for fans is, if, well, if you get beat, well, you don't put 100% in, which is wrong. It's the same with a show that you'll go to, you'll get that 100% of the time. Yeah. It might be better, it might be worse, but you know that you've given your best. Mm -hmm. So you can walk away from that and go fine. So I don't relate winning um, with just giving 100% or pushing behind the, the, the jersey. I think they've all got that. There's the guys over the last 50, 60, 100 years have all got that. It's just occasionally we, that you do better on other occasions. Erin, uh, can I just quickly ask you a little bit about Billy? Have you spoken to him? 
No, I've not. I, I thought actually somebody was trolling me when they sent me that on WhatsApp. Cause it was, uh, I had one of my English mates send me it, so I thought they were at it because <laughs> he'd played so well and he'd took the rip out of all of them. So yeah. couldn't believe it when I, when I found out the news, to be honest. I was Aye. just shocked. I was kind of in disbelief. I was like, how's that happened? Like, that's such the biggest Scottish thing to happen to us. <laughs> Best player, Friday night, performance his life, played in a match and then, then he's out with COVID. But you know what? I know Billy and I know that... He'll not let it affect him. He'll be really, really upset and disappointed. But I think the lads will go on and want to do a performance for him tonight. T -t absolutely right. Can we talk a wee bit about Tuesday, about tonight, about the big game, Gordon? How would you set the team up for it? <laughs> I don't think about that anymore. <laughs> I'm not sure of that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you're here for today. I just go along on. and enjoy it. Aye. I would have set it up. I I've no study the Croatian team. No. You've got a good record against Croatia, though, haven't you? Yeah, we beat them twice when they were, I think they were second in the, uh, the world. They are beatable, eh? Well, that team seven years ago, I don't know about the one tonight. Right. Um, of course they are, they're, they're not as, as good as what they were um, a few years ago, but they're still, it's a right man's team that you have to play really well mm -hmm. to play against. And as I said to you, that, but Billy's got, um, uh, Steve's got to look at his team and go, right, okay, what happened on Friday? Will there be a different system we're playing against? So he has to pick, pick a team that, or does he just go, right, that was brilliant, I'll do the very same again. Um, obviously can't because Billy's missing out that he has to tinker it with a bit but is he happy with the, 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 the way they played he might stick to that or if he sees something a weakness on the creation side he goes right I need to change it just for that and that's uh, that's the big, big decisions you make as a manager and his decisions so far particularly on Friday have been excellent so I really it's very as again that's that punditry thing everybody goes right oh, I'd play that do that would you really uh -huh. When you're actually on the man who's, you know, punditry's fantastic because there's no consequences <laughs> yeah. to your work, yeah. Yeah. none whatsoever, there's yeah. no consequences, the boy's been doing it for 20, 30 years, yeah. there's no consequences. When you're the, 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 um, the manager, everything you do has a consequence, yeah. so it's, uh, and again, we have to trust Steve that he's got to pick the right system. You mentioned the passion with the Scotland team, is it more difficult as a manager at the national team to leave a player out than it is at club level? I think so, yeah, yeah. and I'll tell you, I'll try to say it, but I've said to people on Friday night that there were, there were English fans and they wanted Gareth Southgate to go in and blast them and give them everything. And I kind of did, isn't it, in a national manager? And in reality, because the, 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 the international squads, I, I, we never got paid unless yeah. you, you qualify for something. So literally, you're leaving your, your home for two weeks you're leaving your wife with the kids and things like that, and you go away for two weeks, and uh, you play, and you get hammered by the press, <laughs> a big axe on your head and things like that, for nothing. Then <laughs> you phone your wife and say, are you getting a game? No. Uh, why are you going? Because <laughs> I'm a Scotsman, I want to go. So what I'm saying is, you, you, if I'm paying somebody 100 grand a week, 50, 40, I can demand from them. Aye. International level, you can only ask, because they're doing it because they want to do it. It's not because they have to do it. They're giving their time up to come and play for the country that they love and they want to play for. So it's very hard to go and demand from a player. And you also, you went, when they turn up, Erin goes along and plays, goes, the Chelsea people want her to come back in the same yeah. mental yeah. state, yeah. you know, then when she left. Imagine if the last thing she see me was screaming and shouting at her and going back destroyed <laughs> to, uh, to Chelsea. They wouldn't be happy with that. You wouldn't be happy no. with that. You can only ask. And sometimes it's amazing. You can get good results from asking rather than demanding. Aye, it's, it's, it's definitely a big thing, isn't it, being that Scotland? I, just, I couldn't do it. It's a tough gig, tough gig telling somebody they're not playing tonight. Right, let's have a little look at another wee clip we've got from our pals at BT. Uh, we've been supporting some community clubs across Scotland, giving free broadband and digital technology. So we sent the author, the brilliant author, Chris McQueer, along with a couple of ex-players and Rebecca Seller as well to have a little look at what they've been up to with some predictions for tonight's game as well. Hulk United, BT Connected Club. Let's go and check it out. Uh, how's been enjoying the Euros so far? I think the build-up's been brilliant. Mm. It's great that the games are in Glasgow. And it's great to see the positivity around the national team. And then, obviously, the game against England was, was brilliant. Highlight of the tournament was Friday. It was so tense. Oh man, Croatia, like, I hope we can do the business against them, I really hope. We, we do maybe have our work cut out, but like, if we go back in there, like we were, 
we did with England. I think we've got a high chance now. We've, we're in the right position, basically. Right, mate. Croatia on Tuesday. What's your thoughts? Croatia, Tuesday. We're going to win 2-0. Two, two strikers to score. Yeah, come on. So as you can see, Battle Fever has well and truly taken over here at Paul United. Let's hope our boys can do the business against Croatia and we can make it through to the next stage of the tournament. Scotland! Excellent stuff. And if a little gander to that, you can win that. ScottishFA.co.uk forward slash donate if you want to get your hands on that. And I'll remember uh, John McGinn's uh, tape measures on there as well. Could come in very yes. handy, Gordon, couldn't it? John? <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose it could if you... <laughs> depends what you want to use it for. <laughs> but the... Um, <laughs> If you ever look at it, you should use it for his legs. Have you ever seen the size of his legs? Unbelievable. He's huge. Big boy. Cats and thighs, you know. Uh, and I said to him one day, if you've got to use steroids, son, use it for the rest of your body, because you've never much of a chest. But what a wonderful kid, huh? Aye. Absolutely. And you'll find that with football players. They get a bad um, bill in there and then, but they two boys, Robertson, and uh, I've known for years. Yeah. Wonderful kids, being brought up right, and it's, it's amazing if you, if you have that, then you can go quite far. It's very rarely you get a backside going yeah. really up there in football. <laughs> the occasional one slips through, um, but generally they're wonderful, wonderful people they work with. Amy, have you met a few of the lads in this squad? Um, I don't think I've actually met anybody in this squad, no, hmm. no, so I don't know. I noticed anything. you were enjoying Darren Fletcher getting five in the darts. No, I wasn't at all, because <laughs> I'm like, that's what I'm aiming for, <laughs> as right? long as I can get that, but I don't think I'll even get that. I really need your help with this, by the way. Father-in-law, Jim Leishman, Provost of Fife, MBE, Google me hen, as we call him. He's top of the bill there, 95, yeah. 96. Yeah. I need you to beat him. So can you all please have a go I don't think we could beat him. Together, the three years. <laughs> but we'll have a bash. We've, we've got to try. I'd love it if you'd come and have a go if that's all right. So if you all come up and have a wee crack at the darts, please. Right, come on. This, this is the way right, to do it. Go. So uh, choose oh, your weapons, one at please. Time. Amy, oh, you come on one at a time. Then we've got over so Amy, go on first. You, you can do your full time. European warm up, Gordon. We've got a stretch get the arms going. Right, Amy McDonald's up first, ladies and gentlemen. Is this more or less nerve wracking than Hamden? This is more nerve wracking. Should I stand than further than away? <laughs> oh, Cloud! <Frisco. laughs> right, come on, here we go. First arrow. It's good. In with us, an 11. Followed by an 8. We're on 19. Oh, and 18. Eight. That's 37, oh, I think, from my That's so bad. That's all so bad mental arithmetic. 37 for me, McDonald. So, remember that 37. 37. Okay. Who would like to go next? Erin, do you want to have a crack? Oh, and you go, Gordon. Oh, Gordon Strachan. Come on, Gordon. Go. Right. Right. Which one do you use? It's interesting, yeah, this. <laughs> He's gone for the blue arrows, which is... No, no, I'm going for the... Uh, oh, see, my, it's, it's got my name on it, yeah. <laughs> Scotland yeah, arrows, we'll yeah. call them the Scotland right. arrows. So here he goes, Gordon Strachan. Right, I'll be going for the, uh, the lower part of the board, because I can't reach the top part. <laughs> <laughs> right, here okay. He goes. The misspent youth in uh, Muir House with Irvin Welsh is going to oh, show it's, up here. Oh, uh, it's snooker in Dundee. <laughs> if you get a snooker table, it'll be all right. Here he goes. Oh, just misses the double tops. It's two. You've got, you've got oh, So I'm going to beat five, eh? Right, right Darren Fletch is on five, so you need... You I'll need. just go for the middle of the board and see what happens. He's equaled Darren Fletcher oh, on five. Oh, <laughs> and just <laughs> one more one. That was close. <laughs> Right, Erin, let's see oh, if you can no. beat. On you go, Erin. It's easy. Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Erin. Come on, Erin. Right. No pressure here. I've got my here, best goal here. I've got, I reckon you've got this in you. I've, I've just need to hit the focus, board. Focus, focus. Here we go, here we go. First out of treble 20. Oh, oh, treble oh, 20. That's a 60. What a start, by the way. By the way, this is great. They were my darts, Erin. Big game player. <laughs> oh, it's, it's another 20. We're on 80. <gasps> Come on, Erin. Oh, no. Erin, another, another. No, throw that last time again. That last time. Yeah, come on. Anything 16 and above, we're in. Yeah! 100! That's fantastic. That is a one, by the way. That's fantastic. I'm delighted for you. Erin, thrilled about that. That's 100. What a score, That's one of my biggest achievements, I must say. Outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. That's unbelievable. Right, not long to go until the big game. Before we, we leave you all, we've got to ask for a prediction of the game tonight. So, Amy, I think we'll start with you. What's going to happen this evening? 1-0 uh, Scotland. Come on, 1-0 yeah! Scotland, Amy McDonald. <laughs> Mr Strachan, I'll go 2-1. Yes, Scotland. Yeah! Come on, Scotland. Yeah! Erin? I'm going 2-0 Scotland. There we go, Erin. Tough luck.
Absolutely sensational stuff. Thank you so much, Amy McDonald, Gordon Strachan and Erin Cuthbert. You've been great this morning. Not long until the big game. Please do get in touch with us. Hashtag ScotlandHQ if you want to send us all your preparation for the big game. Just leaves us with one thing to say. Come on, Scotland, you can do it. Come on! Come on!